Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell, and welcome to the story behind the music. This is a series of pre-concert lectures that um, I have given in circumstances in the concert hall or before a concert, and I'm sharing it with you as you explore and understand more about classical music. And I hope these are helpful. They're not meant to be comprehensive. I do not do uh, great uh, dissections of the music theory or the structure of the pieces. I mostly talk about a portion of the life of the composer and what they did and how it relates to the piece of music that we'll be listening to. Today I'm going to be talking about Béla Bartók, who lived from 1881 to 1945, in particular his Romanian folk dances. Bartók began composing at the age of nine. His mother had been his first piano teacher and his first public performance was at age 11, including a piece that he had composed himself. It's important to understanding the music of Bartók that he was born in Austria-Hungary and that during his life, the country changed name from that to Romania. And in the course of that change, the town he was born in also changed its name. So as a composer and as a person, he was invested in the distinctions between Hungarian music and Romanian music. That's a distinction that for many of us, that's lost on us today, as it was for most of the audiences of his time period. It was a distinction without a difference. They were Eastern European folk music to them. For Bartok, this was an essential difference. While most of his contemporaries went to study music in Vienna, he had gone to study in Budapest at the Royal Hungarian Academy of Music. He studied with and alongside Ernst von Doknonyi and Zoltan Kodai. If you had met him in his school days, you would have known him as a pianist. And so during that time of study, he gained a thorough knowledge of the music of his fellow Hungarian Franz Liszt. Despite his early start at composition, he was really fairly late to the game of serious composition. Mainly, he seemed to be searching for his own voice. There's an apocryphal story that he heard a maid singing a song that interests him, and he asked her what it was. And all that she knew was that it was a song her mother had sung to her as a child, and that this set him off on his quest to find out the name of the song, and that grew into his love and interest in folk music. It may have happened, or it may just be a sweet story. What we can point to definitively is that at this age, the age of 21, he discovered the music of Richard Strauss. Now, for some of you, just for clarity, that's not the waltz king, Johann Strauss and his sons. This is the music of Richard Strauss, definitely more cerebral and more modern. Uh, this sparked Bartok's interest in composition. And this interest was synchronous with the growing movement of Hungarian nationalism. And these things for Bartok became fused in firing his imagination. He was also influenced by the experimentalism of the composers Debussy, Stravinsky, and even Schoenberg. And we can hear all of these various influences, the study of Liszt, the Hungarian nationalism, Debussy, Stravinsky, Schoenberg, uh, Strauss, we hear all of this in the music of Bartok. That's part of what gives his music such a distinct sound, this interest in and knowledge of modern experimental experimentalism combined with this intense knowledge and love of historic folk music. Now, we sometimes forget that historic traditional music also had dissonances inherited from medieval polyphony, and that can make folk music sound very much in keeping with modern experimental music. And Bartok was clearly aware of how these two reflected each other and played off of each other. Bartok and Kodai were invested in the study of Hungarian folk music and worked together 
in researching it. What they discovered initially was that the music that they thought was Hungarian folk music was actually the music of city-dwelling Roma. So they began traveling to the far reaches of the countryside to define what was distinctly Hungarian folk music. They were intensely involved in this discovery and the notation of historical works, the transcription of them initially into piano works, and then the inclusion of these themes and textures into orchestral works. They were really musical friends. Uh, Bartok and Kodai supported and encouraged each other in much the same way as Haydn and Mozart did. Bartok and Kodai traveled extensively over eight years throughout Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia. In addition to exploring musical distinctions, they were also invested in a notion of a brotherhood of Eastern Europeans that superseded the political boundaries that were shifting during their lifetime. So this notion of brotherhood that superseded a, an imposed national uh, border. Now this particular piece, his Romanian dances, took Bartok back to his birthplace. The town where he was born was in Transylvania as part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but later annexed by Romania. This work was originally a solo piano work. It's often played today as a work for piano and violin. Originally titled Romanian Folk Dances of Hungary, with a U, referring again not to Romania but to the Roma peoples, as the work developed from solo piano into orchestral work, the political climate was changing and it was delicate and certainly his publishers would have been aware of these changes and how it might affect perceptions of the piece. So it was just renamed Romanian Folk Dances. In all of its versions, this is one of Bartok's most access accessible and popular works. In this work, Bartok specifically uses dissonance to punctuate the energetic and jagged rhythms of the piece. As I mentioned before, these older folk musics often include dissonance and even oriental sounding combinations. Uh, a good example of this would be klezmer music. It combines both heart-wrenching and catchy melodies, but often some very dissonant harmonies as well. So that's an example of that kind of folk music sound that Bartok began with. So here in this work, we have these traditional Western tonal palettes intentionally taken a bit farther by adding the Eastern tonal palettes that were infusing the work of Debussy and other contemporary composers. And the directness and immediacy of the folk dances allow us to hear how his ethnomusicological, ethnomusicological, let's say that three times together, ethnomusicological work. We can hear how this work permeated this and his other later works, and how he was both interested in the past and well-versed in the past, but at the same time, he was completely current. Enjoy Bartok's Romanian dances. Thank you. <laughs>